Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you, every one of you, all of you, those who deserve as well as those who do not deserve. May you all be blessed. And the blessing that we wish upon you is not simply a blessing that only lasts for as long as you are alive. No. But the blessing that will last for all eternity. This is the great wealth God has given us. The wealth of the knowledge of His will. The wealth of the understanding of who He is. The wealth of the understanding of His righteousness. His righteousness. He is righteous, perfectly righteous. And He is righteousness itself. So His followers, when they are blessed, when people are blessed, they truly follow the Lord Jesus, then they follow righteousness truth, a correct life with order, dignity, things which back in the day were very much valuable. Today, people don't really give much value to these things, but God remains the same. He hasn't changed His ways. What He was, He is, and will be forever. And we cannot change either. The times we are living in cannot change our values. It cannot change our character, our integrity. It should always be the same. Pay attention. Listen. Peter, speaking of righteousness, Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how often... Shall I forgive my brother? Forgive my brother who sinned against me. Up to seven times. Then Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven, which means four hundred and ninety times. But it's not 490 times that he meant that he, we should forgive our brother. We must forgive indefinitely in the same way that we need to be forgiven indefinitely. Yes or no? And this must be clear to all of us. All right, the, the person wronged you, they sinned, they did something terrible against you. You will forgive that person, even though you won't continue to live with them anymore. If there is, for example, separation, marriage is undone, even if you won't live with the person anymore, but you won't hate them, you will wish them the best, you forgive them. To forgive is to wish the best to the person you forgave. And just as we need forgiveness, we also must forgive. And how many should we be forgiven ourselves? How many times? Listen, if it's not indefinitely, then we lose our souls. We lose our soul to the devil. Because the devil does not want us to be forgiven. He does not want us to forgive. He insists in bothering the person with a grudge, a resentment, and make them remember of what they did and the damage that they were caused and so on. That's how the devil works. But when we live in the kingdom of God, when we live in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is the church of the Lord Jesus. 
not the institutional church, friends. It's not church A, B, C, D, the universal church. No, that's not what I mean. The church of the Lord Jesus is spiritual, strictly spiritual. It's invisible. It doesn't have a building. It doesn't have a temple. The temple is our being, our body, our life. The temple of God in the spiritual church, the church of the Lord Jesus, is you and I. And every person that walks in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. So, these must be understood, understood and well assimilated in order for you to know what your position before God is. Because many people belong to a denomination, Church A, B, C, including the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, but they don't belong to the Kingdom of God. They don't belong to the Church of the Lord Jesus, which is spiritual. When the Church is spiritual, then it is inserted, it is in Jesus, it lives in Jesus, it believes in Jesus, it married Jesus, it lives a life of intimacy with God. So it has the mind of the Lord Jesus. If this person, this church has the mind of the Lord Jesus, they acted as Jesus would if he was here in this world. That's it. So when the person is inserted in the church of the Lord Jesus, this person forgives as many times as necessary. And they are forgiven as many times as necessary. They will always fail. They will always make mistakes. They will always sin. We are all bound to make mistakes. All of us. Paul, who was Paul, a man of God, full of the Holy Spirit, he said, what a miserable man I am, the miserable man I am. And in order for me not to boast of the revelations, of the great revelations God gave me, it was placed a thorn in my flesh in order for me not to forget that I am a man. And then he said, what a miserable man I am. Therefore, dear friends, all of us, however faithful and loyal to God we are, we are still living in this house of clay, which is our body. However, this house of clay is full of gold, pure gold, which is the Holy Spirit. It's the dwelling of the Holy Spirit, but it's still clay, so we fail. We sometimes say things that we shouldn't say. Sometimes we think what we should not think. Sometimes we act in a way we shouldn't have acted. Yes or no? We look in a way that we shouldn't have looked with malice. Yes or no? You, I, all of us can conjugate the verb to sin, which means I sin, you sin, they sin, my mother sinned, my father sinned, we all sinned. However, when we forgive people, when we are always forgiving, forgiving, anyone, whether it's a brother or, or not, when we forgive them, we are obviously being led by the Holy Spirit to give what we have received, which is forgiveness. You forgive, of course, that if you forgive, you will also be forgiven. If you don't forgive, how can you be forgiven? It's impossible. And Jesus speaks about this in the parable of the, of the kingdom of heaven. 
he says the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who who decided to settle accounts with his servants and one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents 10,000 talents back then was impossible to be paid he would have to live let's say 300 years working hard just to pay his debt there was no way he could do that but he did not forgive his fellow servant who owed him just a few talents just a hundred days worth of work he was forgiven from a debt of hundreds of years of work but he did not want to forgive the debt of his fellow servant that owed him just a hundred days worth of work let's put it this way so how can someone like this be forgiven? They cannot. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of forgiveness, the kingdom of love. But love is not a feeling. Practical love is to wish the best to your neighbor. This is God's love, to wish the best to the neighbor, to wish the best on others. Not only to want the best for yourself, but to want the best for others as well. The first commandment is to love God, and the second is to love the neighbor. Therefore, dear friends, when we speak of righteousness, the same measure of righteousness that we offer others is the one that will be offered back to us as well. So if I am lenient with someone who failed with me, if I forgive, I shall also be forgiven. But if I do not forgive, I will not be forgiven either. It doesn't matter the position that we have in the church. None of these matters. Those who belong to the church of the Lord Jesus have no position. They are nothing. They are just servants. It's a child that serves. It's a servant who is a child. So you must understand that people, for example, sometimes they get upset with others. Oh, they shouldn't have done that to me. Oh, I don't accept this. I won't put up with this. I don't accept it. However, they also, they also wronged others. And then, what do we do in this case? Therefore, dear friends, the kingdom of God is taken by force. You have to violate your will or your wills. I have to violate my wills. God is ready to forgive. Everyone who cries out to him with sincerity. Actually, today is the day of the return of the prodigal children. Praise God. However, certainly, for sure, these prodigal children will not consider the mistakes that others did to them. They will also have to forgive, of course. Yes or no? Isn't it true? They will forgive because... If they find forgiveness from God, why shouldn't they forgive their offenders as well? Therefore, dear friends, the kingdom of God is spiritual. The kingdom of God is inside of those who hear and obey the word of God. So the person makes mistakes, they fail, and that's why Jesus teaches in his prayer he said, forgive our sins as we forgive our debtors. Did you understand? Of course that you did. This language is very easy to understand. Forgiveness is easy to understand. It's difficult to practice. But if we don't practice it, then it becomes complicated, very difficult. We have to practice it even though we may fail, but still we have to forgive those who fail us. 
Praise God, isn't it? Isn't it nice? God is wonderful. He's fair. He's perfect. He gives us all the conditions we need in order for us to live in permanent communion with Him. Permanent communion with Him. Praise God. So if the person fails us, they have to be forgiven. We have to forgive them. We must forgive them because we are also forgiven. May God bless you. And we start then the journey of the return, the return of the prodigal son. Okay? May God bless you. At every universal church of the kingdom of God, come to receive God's forgiveness. Come to receive the joy of your salvation. Come to receive the peace that you had lost. Come to receive back the embrace of the Father. May God bless you and I'll see you later. Praise God.